Hello there, my fellow misguided battle brothers, and welcome to your usual dose of Space Marine Chapters lore. This time it is part 2 from our coverage of the Executioner's chapter. Previously we did talk about who these fellows are and some elements of their early chapter history. Like I promised in that episode, today we are gonna continue their history, with a main focus on their role in the Badab War, but also several campaigns undertook after that. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see what happened next, shall we? The Battle of Carrion Deep, 899-M41 Responding to a series of frantic astropathic distress calls from several Imperial Deep Range outposts, the forces of the Executioner's Second Company, led by Lord High Chaplain Tulsa Kane, investigated. They soon found themselves in a desperate struggle against an awakened threat stirring on the death world of Carrion Deep, near the Veiled Region on the edge of the Segmentum Tempestus. Upon investigation, the Executioners discovered nothing but a trail of shattered ruins and empty bastions, where there should have been Imperial outposts instead. The second company was ambushed in the wreckage of these frontier bases. Surrounded and outnumbered by metallic foes that would not die, it was only by the dauntless leadership and wise cunning of Cain that they were able to survive. Leading the second company in a furious counter-assault, the executioners came to grips with their foes, taking advantage of their inherent speed and ferocity only possessed by the Astartes. Cain himself sought and confronted the enemy leader, and after a titanic clash of arms, he struck the metallic creature down. However, the battle left Cain's Crozius Arcanum broken, and his right eye withered in his skull. Although his battle brothers wanted to fight on to the bitter end, the High Chaplain's will prevailed. Less than one third of the Executioner's task force succeeded in breaking out of the deadly trap of their undying enemy. The Battle of Carrion Deep does represent one of the first confirmed and detailed Imperial battle reports against the ancient alien menace later known as the Necrons. The Badab War 904-911-M41 The Executioner's Chapter was one of four Astartes chapters which rebelled against the authority of the Imperium during the Badab War. Their involvement in Lufthuran's cause was the result of a blood debt that the chapter owed the Astral Clause from more than a millennium before. By 904-M41, the Executioners had fully joined the Rebellion on the side of the Astral Clause and the Secessionists. Soon after the discovery of the heretical intent of Lufthuran and his chapter, Inquisitorial missions were dispatched to the homes of the Mantis Warriors and the Executioners' chapters. They were to examine for any evidence of complicity in this heresy, as well as genetic tampering and moral deviance of any kind. The Inquisition's mission to the Executioner's binary homeworlds of Stygia Aquilon was allowed full access, when it finally arrived after a five-month journey fraught with peril to the southern fringe of the Maelstrom Zone. Despite some serious concerns over the individualistic and somewhat fractious tendencies of the chapter, the Inquisition's investigation found both their gene seed and their faith uncorrupted and the visit also shed some light on the causes of their involvement in the conflict on the secessionist side. During this war, the executioners steadily refused to operate under the direct control of the tyrant of Badab, operating only as the Astral Claw's uneasy allies, but never as subordinates. While nominally allied with the forces of the tyrant, it became immediately apparent that the executioners fought on their own terms and apparently they were looking at their allies with contempt. The chapter refused to garrison units, claim territory, or attack non-military targets. Despite this, its forces soon gained a fearsome reputation, especially among the Howling Griffins chapter, to whom the executioners dealt a catastrophic blow at Chimara's lunar outposts in 907-M41. Also to the supply convoys of the Loyalist forces, whom they mercilessly hounded with their powerful flagship, the Night Hag. 
This resulted in much ire within the ranks of the secessionists during the war. The chapter had a tendency to leave survivors of their attacks behind once their military objectives were met, even allowing the surrender of defeated foes with honor. This angered Lufthuron to no end. Because of the executioner's perceived lack of resolve, the tyrant of Badab instituted a policy of having his forces shadow theirs, so air tags, they can do what must be done, and to keep the executioner's chapter as distant from his own machinations and actions as possible. But as the war worsened for the secessionists, Huron was forced to rely heavily on the executioners to contest the maelstrom zone. This would prove disastrous, and resulted in the executioners turning on the Astral Claws after the events surrounding the surrender of a battle barge of the Salamander's chapter. The forces under the Astral Claws Arch Centurion Commodus attack the Salamander's battle barge Pyre of Glory, intent on pillaging its jeansid stores and armory, despite the fact that it had peacefully surrendered to the executioners. Incensed at such a breach of honor, the executioners turned on the Astral Claws, not stopping until all of the Oathbreakers were dead. This furious battle was named the Red Hour, for the vast amounts of blood shed in such a short span of time. From that point on, the chapter would become a rogue element in the war, attacking both Loyalist and the Secessionist forces alike, although supply convoys were surprisingly left alone. The executioners would conduct their own private war with their former allies until they negotiated a surrender to the Loyalist forces and a withdrawal from the war zone in 9-11 and 41. Through the intercession of Captain Pelas Mirsan of the Salamanders, who felt that he owed the executioners a debt of gratitude, the chapter was allowed to peacefully exit the hostilities, despite some misgivings from the other Loyalists. The entirety of the executioner's force in the Badab War, led by Chaplain Tulsa Kane, was escorted back to the Salamander's world of Nocturne, where they would remain until the end of the war. Of all those that were caught up in the secessionist cause, the executioner's chapter emerged from this conflict the least scathed and the least tainted. They had fought honorably and lived and died by their oath. One year after the destruction of Badab Primaris in 913M41, the remaining secessionists of the Astral Claws, Executioners, Mantis Warriors, and Lamenters chapters were put on trial before a specially convened court of their peers in the Adeptus Astartes. The very existence of these chapters was at stake. Despite the attempts of the Inquisition to have the matter placed fully under inquisitorial control, a conclave of five Space Marine Chapter Masters, whose forces were not part of the conflict, was convened in judgment in accordance with Astartes' tradition. This consistorial court found all those chapters which had taken part in the Badab secession guilty in breaking with both the Codex Astartes and the ancient covenant with the Emperor that it represented. The executioners had not rebelled against the Imperium out of treachery, but because of a pre-existing blood debt between themselves and the Astral Claws. This was a debt that they felt no longer needed to be honored due to the tyrant's dishonorable actions during the war and his affiliation with the ruinous powers. Because of their honorable conduct throughout the conflict, the Salamanders themselves stood as a guarantor of the executioner's compliance and conduct. There remain those on the Loyalist side who, though bound to obedience in the matter, would never forget the bad blood between them. Granted the Emperor's forgiveness by the High Lords of Terra, the court determined that the executioners had mistakenly sided with the traitors as a result of deception. Though they remain subject to undertaking a century-long penitent crusade to atone for the Loyalist blood spilled. They were also forbidden from recruiting new initiates during this time, much like their fellow penitents, the Mantis Warriors. The Executioner's twin chapter worlds were given over to the Salamanders and their own successors rather than be forfeited entirely. If the Executioners completed their crusade and were still an effective fighting force by that point, then all of it would be returned to them. The Corsiran Massacre
9-10-M41. This one is considered one of the lost tales of the Badab War, whose actual facts will never be fully known. What became known as the Corsiran Massacre was discovered by a Loyalist naval patrol in 910M41. The wreckage of a smuggler base was discovered in the dust waste of the forlorn world of Corsira II. What was found within the base was a nightmare scene of carnage and destruction never before witnessed. A bloody battle had been fought between sub-company-sized units of Space Marines from the Executioners and the Carcharodons chapter. These two chapters, both famous in their own right for their savagery and unyielding nature, had fought each other to mutual annihilation. The base around them was ripped apart, trampling its former inhabitants into the dust. Many of the bodies on both sides showed signs of having fought on, despite suffering horrendous wounds, severed limbs and massive trauma that should have felled even on Astartes. Several were found locked in deftly gore-splattered embraces, striking at their foe with their last ebbing breath. It is unknown which chapter's sole remaining fighter breathed last to claim a bitter victory. Neither chapter has ever acknowledged any survivors of the massacre living to tell the tale. Steel Unbound, 919M41 Following their alliance with Luft Huron during the Badab War, and their subsequent voluntary internment under license to the Salamanders, the executioners were finally released to begin their penitent crusade. In the first decades of this campaign, a dozen recidivist cults were purged from the Telamon Cloud, and three minor Xenos strains infecting the Garia Rifts were exterminated. The most glorious of many actions fought during the opening years of this crusade was against a previously unknown pocket empire deep within the galactic core, entirely in the sway of the ruinous powers and maintaining pacts with at least three traitor legion warbands and one traitor titan legion. The executioners earned many honors far from the gaze of the Imperium the only witness being the agents dispatched by the High Lords of Terra to track their progress through the lawless void. The Sire of Methusa Fifty-two years into their 100-year-long penitent crusade imposed upon them for their part in the Badab War, the executioners encountered a region near the galactic core that no Imperial force had visited for millennia. In an area of high stellar density, the executioners encountered a compact empire, seemingly entirely isolated from the Imperium and ruled by a cast of leaders descended from a rogue trader dynasty. The executioners made war upon what they declared was a secessionist enclave, a heresy punishable by death. Hypocrites much? It was during the fighting for the Empire's capital world that a land raider Achilles was fielded against the chapter's warriors costing the lives of several executioners from the first company. When at length the executioners defeated the secession, they claimed this Achilles as a spoil of war, renaming it the Sire of Methusa and granting it pride of place in the chapter's fleet-borne arsenal. Death Quest, 998M41 now, over eight decades into their crusade, and having battled relentlessly across the vast waves of the Imperium and beyond, the executioners came upon the ruins of the Orpheus Sector. Discovering a realm decimated by war, the bones of countless heroes being picked over by the verminous Necron warriors, the executioners vowed that their death quest will be completed here. Unheralded, the Imperial Task Force, assigned to track the executioners on their crusade, arrived in the region several days later, and a series of high-level astropathic transmissions were sent to Terra and the Inquisition representative on the Senatorum Imperialis. What fully happened there is known only to the executioners themselves. And this, my friends has been what I wanted to tell you about the Executioners for today. What are your thoughts about their misguided loyalty during the Badab War? Would you have still honored that blood debt and fought against the Loyalists? Or would you have done things in a different way? 
Feel free to share any of your thoughts or opinions on this matter in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.